Hey guys, Mr. Cheese Gaming here, and welcome back to more of Let's Play Majora's Mask. Last time, we started the Stone Tower Temple, and along the way, I started discussing my own theories on how the temple may have been created. And in this part, we're gonna go ahead and continue on with the Stone Tower Temple, starting off by going into the mid boss. This is the Garo Master. There is an easy method of defeating him just like any other Garo. Well, oh, first, dodge his attack, which I'm doing terrible at. Just dodge his attacks, and then attack him, and then use your shield. Just repeat that process a few times, and he'll go down. It's always funny, because this is why many people believe that the Garo's created the this stronghold, even though that it is proven in game that by saying that they came from a far off land. But I have no idea how they managed to get in here without the allergy of emptiness when not even Ego Itana, the guy who created the song, knows the song, never being able to get up here. Yeah, kind of ironic. Your enemies can get up here without the <laughs> But you yourself can't. Anyways, Garo Master is already defeated. To think I could be defeated with my rival, you were spectacular. I shall take my bow by opening my heart and revealing my wisdom. If you shoot that which releases a sacred golden light onto the bloodstained red emblem outside the temple, it shall rearrange things in which the earth is born in the heavens and the moon is born on the earth. Do not forget these words. Die I shall, leaving no corpse. <laughs> that is the law of us, Garo. And I love how the text actually still remains there until I press A. And on top, I'm standing on top of the chest. I mean, these days I can still move around and then the text won't disappear so long as I don't hit A. Anyways, here's the dungeon item, the light arrows. At this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and continue speeding up the temple. And here we encounter our new enemy. Actually, this enemy is not new. We encountered it... I believe it's called the hip loop. We encountered it back at Woodfall, but this time they're masked. So just use the hookshot to take care of the mask, and then just keep on hookshotting them to defeat them. And this enemy is called an Igor. I hate him, but thankfully there's only two in this game. You want to wait till they attack so their eye will turn yellow. Don't step too far away from them or else they'll back up like that. Just shoot an arrow when their light is yellow. Well, their light is yellow. No, I mean their eye turns yellow. And just do that three times. Well, actually, four times. And Garo shall be defeated. Not Garo. I Gor. We already defeated Garo. That way we can get our summon stray fairy. We go through this door, and what do you know? We're back at the entrance. If you fall down this hole, you can just go ahead and use the ladder to climb up. And get attacked by a dragonfly, which I try to get my revenge on. And I do. Great. So, remember, he said that at the temple entrance, we can actually use the light arrow to, well, do something. Where the moon is born from the earth and the earth is born from the heavens. Whatever that means. So what you want to do is step on this switch, and I'm gonna go back to normal speed to play the Allergy of Emptiness. Dun, dun. Da, 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 da. And I'm actually recording my audio with a, my commentary with a mute version of this video, so I'm sure that I'm not in sync. But anyways, that moves the block away so that we can actually see that emblem that Garu was talking about. And things, I get a feeling things are about to get weird. Because I did not hit the emblem. What do you 
no. The area has been flipped. I guess we changed our perspective. We are no longer blaming. But rather, we are accepting. Which is going to lead to another theory I'm going to talk about. And as you can see, those boulders are falling. Well, actually, they're falling to the sky, which is interesting. So, uh, what this does is that this inverts gravity. But by inverting gravity, we can now walk along the ceiling. Remember that chest that we couldn't get to because it was upside down? Well, here we are, Becca's Stone Tower Temple. And hey, that statue in the back, that more closely resembles Majora now. Now, we're gonna go ahead, turn around. Well, I'm actually trying to find a, a sun um, face so I can go ahead and shoot an arrow at it. The enemy in the background, we're gonna go ahead and cover in just a bit. In the meantime, I'm gonna be trying to find that. I right, please, and it does take me a long time. Because now I remember that it was actually in the hole when the temple was right side up. So I'm gonna have to go to the center, turn around, and actually look farther up. There we go. It would cause the chest to appear. Actually, managed to push us away instead of making us stand on top of it. And we find another stray fairy. I always like this temple because it has always been implied that the residence of Ikana has never been able to accept death. Well, now the temple is flipping, so I think that that's a way of saying that, hey, we should be more accepting of our grief rather than, you know, continue grieving. Now, in the previous video, I covered my theory on the origins of the tower, but I'm going to move on to talk about um, other things that I've noticed throughout the land of Terminal. So, many that are well known, but some that may not be obvious to other players. One thing to mention is that Terminal is confirmed to be a parallel world. Another thing that is that the world of Terminal seems to be focused on the theme of grief and the kubler Ross model. Denial, which is seen in Muto and Clock Town. Anger, which is represented by the Deku King and Southern Swamp Woodfall. Burgundy, seen with the Goron Elder in the mountain village of Snowhead. And Depression, with Lulu and Zorahel near Great Bay. Finally, we are at Acceptance, which the spirits of the Kana lack. Instead of, instead of accepting their death, they blame each other and refuse death. Next Arena of Time, I should also say, in Ocarina of Time, it is said that anyone without a fairy in the Lost Woods would transform, and remember what this game starts off. It was Link trying to find Navi in the Lost Woods. If you get lost in the, like I said, if you're in the Lost Woods, you'll, without a fairy, you will get transformed. If an adult will become a Stalfos, well, a child will become an imp. That's funny. Skull Kid is an imp. In Ocarina of Time, Spike also switches between childhood and adulthood. But in this game, he is a teenager, somewhere between child and adult. This brings me to Tinkle. I know I'm bringing up a funny person in a dark area, but I believe that Link himself is a child that wants to be the adult knight of Hyrule, but Tinkle may represent the adult that wants to be the child of Kiri. This connects very well with the Link is Dead theory, which really questions what side of the stone tower this really takes place in. Not to mention the presence of the twin robot sisters who died in the adult portion of Ocarina of Time. Yes, I know there are many people who are careful of the Dead Link theory. I'm somewhat, I myself am somewhat partial to the theory. As regardless to whether or not Link is grieving his own death and is preparing for reincarnation, I still believe that Stone Tower is a life-death gateway regardless. I don't really care if the theory is true or not, as even I admit, my own game theories can be a result of overanalyzing. Either way, the games are... the Zelda games are really fun nonetheless. So that's the end of my ranting. We're gonna go ahead and continue on with this temple as I was... as I'm finally done ranting. I, as you can see, I have been completely lost because, well, actually, never mind. 
I want to go ahead and step on that chest. I've probably already gone through the lost portion. You can grab that onto that Dexy hand to get some rupees that Dexy hands don't actually do damage to you. Now that what I get for um, actually reading my commentary notes and not actually watching the video that I myself recorded. Anyways, open up that cheat key to get a... Uh, open up the key to get a chest, I was about to say, knowing you open up the chest to get a key. Shoot that sun switch. And a chest that is unfortunately right side up, so you know that. In order to get the rest of the items in this dungeon, you're gonna have to, well, flip the temple right back up again. Once again, inverting gravity. Now, since that switch is actually silver instead of bronze, it basically means that it's not rusty enough to settle into the ground. So, you're gonna have to use the algae of emptiness to do that. You want to go into the highest wind vane and... Get blown up by a mine. No. What you wanna do is go ahead and swim over to the other side. Swim. No. Fly to the other side to get, yet again, another stray fairy. This would be stray fairy number 10 if you're following along. And into the wind tunnel once again. We are gonna go ahead and use that key that we just got to go through this door. Now this puzzle. This is going to be a bit of a demonstration of what's ahead. You may notice some fireballs falling from the ceiling. Well, that's because on the ceiling there is actually lava flowing. So, you want to go ahead and flip the temple, and of course you want to be a Goron, so you can avoid the lava, and then flip the temple once again. Although you may be tempted to go into the previous room and open up that chest, um, don't bother, because it's going to be, because that room is going to be completely different now that it's flipped upside down. And it's going, and we'll get that fairy after, in a while anyways. Anyways, this puzzle is tedious. First of all, I thought that I could pull the blog, but really, you can just push it. And this puzzle is tedious. Be thankful that I'm speeding up this temple, because take a look. This room is just a matter of moving the block, well, rather, pushing the block, and flipping the room over and over again, until you get the block to the right place. First, I thought that you used the block as a platform to get to the door, when actually, no, there was a hole, and that's actually kind of obvious now that I'm looking at it. That hole is actually where we're going to um, need to push, because that gate is just... For some reason, now I can actually pull it. I guess it's because the room has been inverted. To go ahead flip it once more, and here you see that I um, was wondering, oh, can I use a block to get up here, but nope! It was just being absolutely silly. So as I spent a long time figuring out what I was supposed to do, when I've already explained what the puzzle is, oh god, it's... It's hard watching myself sometimes, but when you're an editor, you just have to bear with it. Like, yeah, you guys bear with my videos. Nah, I'm just joking. I hope you guys are enjoying this. If I... I mean, I do enjoy playing the game. Anyways, I was confused because my dungeon note said that I need to use the Zora to actually climb up the block to reach it, but that is actually not the case. You can reach it as just Alien Link. So, Mikel, yeah, without water, you are useless. You're a fish out of water. And this block puzzle is taking longer than it should. I would probably be saying the same thing if this was live commentary, and I'm speeding it up. Jeez. Well, at this point, I finally realized what the answer was, and I finally pushed it, and even back when I was recording this, I felt like a big idiot. As you can see, I don't really need the Zora. Anyways, 
Next mid boss, Wizrobe. This time he's a bit different because he now throws fire at you. And on top of that, there's lava on the floor. You could go ahead and use light arrows, but because I want to conserve magic, I'm going to get that. However, if he's up on the platform like that, you basically have no choice but to use light magic. Now he'll no longer teleport, so now it's just a matter of finding where he is, but he's not right hit me. He's up on that platform again, there are essentially more platforms that he can appear on, which is very annoying. I decided to roll away and he's falling into that fireball there. Really be and what I the problem with this is that I just wasn't really paying attention to the dot on screen when you're supposed to. Obviously there's a hole right there that you do not want to fall down because that actually leads to this guy and well if you fall through this guy you have to do this room all over again. It's even worse because if you actually do that in the boss room, you have to do the entire temple again. No, I'm not joking. That is the case. Anyways, there's poles here, but because they turn invisible when you lock onto them. Well, at that point, I pretty much just gave up. Although they're pretty great for um, bottling and then selling later, but it's kind of pointless because... Well, actually, no, I was going to say it would be pointless because I would have max amount of money at the end of the level. Anyways, because of a cool trick I'm about to show off. I actually missed my opportunity to catch that ghost because it already disappeared at the time that I popped out, so... I'm gonna fly back. And I'm gonna go ahead and take the opportunity to take care of both posts. Well, actually, no, just one pose now that I remember right, and go ahead and bottle this one. I suppose I can actually sell that pole at the curiosity shop. Anyways, here's that enemy that we saw him right at the beginning of the temple. I completely forgot what these guys are, but here's the thing. You want to flip them upside down by using the light arrows and then taunt them into attacking you before they go right back up again. Taunt them. There we go. They're a bit. They actually remind me quite a bit like Armos in that sense because you know they chased after you and they try to um they blow up after you. Don't have to take care of every single one, but it does make things a lot easier. Playing the elegy of emptiness once again. Defeat this guy and just make. And I'm really happy that they drop magic because you do use light arrows on them and get a small key. So further into the temple we go. Let's jump here. And that door is actually unlocked, so you don't have to worry about that. But there is a door up ahead that you are going to need the key for. Obviously, or else they wouldn't give you the key. Fortunately, I have to actually knock those bombs into each other, and so I've made a mistake of aiming for the middle one instead of the one off to the side. Now, those pots right there, they actually do fly after you, so just be cautious about that and not go too far ahead. But anyways, beyond here, you've got some bubbles. You can fight them. Well, if you defeat them with a light arrow, you can actually get tons of gold rupees from them. But anyways, we seem to be stocking up here, so it seems like we're gonna have another big mid-boss. So, if you like this video, go ahead, leave behind a like, leave behind a comment, enjoy this end screen, and I'll see you guys next time as we do one more mid-boss and finish up this temple. See you guys then.